time is brain. Think of a stroke as a forest fire. It starts small, it's gonna burn a few trees, and over time, it's gonna burn the whole forest. Whatever has been damaged, you can't bring it back. What this mechanical thrombectomy does is, you put the fire out, and you haven't really seen anything this big in the care of stroke patients. And in terms of uh, treatment power, it's something that you haven't seen in neurology before. Your chances of being back to normal and near normal is close to 50% with the treatment. If you have no treatment, the chance is just like 13%. Very well, not getting exposure on I know why. So essentially what you do is most of the time you go through the groin artery called the femoral artery. We get inside the blood vessel and then under x-ray guidance, you can guide that tube all the way to the neck. We should contrast that. You then can take pictures of the brain blood vessels, locate the site where the blood clot is occluding the main artery, and then you would put the stent retriever. They essentially look like a wire mesh, and then the clot gets engaged, integrated in the wire mesh, and then we can remove everything as a unit and then hopefully the blood clot is completely removed. That procedure can be as quick as uh, 10 minutes to 20 minutes. This was a patient that actually came within the time window for the intravenous blood clot buster medication, the so-called TPA. However, because the, the clot was uh, long and, and big, uh, it was too big for the TPA to dissolve it. We were fortunate to uh, very quickly remove the blood clot and see this wonderful response uh, that immediately after the procedure, he had essentially uh, gone back to normal. My wife told me to blink both my eyes, I thought I did. She said I only blinked one. Felt like I blinked both of them. Just squeezed my hand, felt like I was squeezing her hand because your brain is sending the signal that you're doing it, but your body's not receiving it. So you're thinking you're doing something that you're not doing. Oh, I told her not to call 911, but it, I mean, I was slurring when I said it, so <laughs> she wasn't gonna listen. <laughs> Initially, what you have here is, again, a complete occlusion of the middle cerebral artery. And, and these areas here, they are responsible for your movement, your motor function, uh, specifically in the face and arm. So the blockage was exactly here, and you were missing out this piece here. So luckily, because you were able to reestablish the blood flow uh, before the brain died, it regained the function. It's my biggest fear because that's how my dad died. If he was 55, you know, I'm 36, I'm not expecting anything like that. I hear it's pretty, pretty far into some trouble there. Uh, had I had to go somewhere else, I might not be talking right now. I do know in dealing with my dad's stroke, time means everything. Time lost is, is the worst thing. So yeah, it makes all the difference to be able to go to a place where they have everything you need there. The big delays are before the patient gets through the hospital door. Just because patients are not educated about strokes, they don't know uh, their, the signs and symptoms, they don't know there is two very effective treatments that are extremely time sensitive. Uh, even when the patient activates 911, uh, the system is still not optimized. Unfortunately, many people you come late to the hospital when the brain damage has already complete itself. It's about taking the right patient at the right time to the right place.